This lesson is part one for section 6.5. We're going to be talking about rational exponents, and then in part two, we're going to be solving exponential equations. So our first objective for today is to evaluate rational exponents without a calculator. So again, we're going to be doing stuff without a calculator. Um, and the word ratio appears in rational. Uh, remember, a rational number is a number that can be written as the uh, quotient of two integers. So here I have an integer divided by another integer. Um, we're also going to simplify radical expressions using rational exponents. So that'll be the second part of what we're going to work on today. And then this last objective is for tomorrow, where we're going to solve exponential equations. So let's begin with evaluating rational exponents without a calculator, which is our first objective. So here we have 81 to the 1 4th power. Now without a calculator, this might look really confusing, but what you can do is rewrite this base. Right now my base is 81. I want to rethink what 81 is equivalent to so that I can rewrite this as the, the base with a different power. So I'm going to write this as a power of 2, or I'm sorry, a power of 3, as 3 to the 4th power. So I haven't really changed the problem at all if I write this as 3 to the 4th to the 1 4th because 81 is equivalent to that 3 to the 4th. So now I can actually multiply these exponents, and I see that this is actually 3 to the first power. 4 times 1 fourth just gives me 1. So 81 to the 1 fourth power is the same as 3 to the first power. So evaluating this without a calculator is actually quite easy. Um, in number 2, you can rewrite this base, 49, as 7 squared. 7 squared raised to the 1 half power is also 7 to the first power, which is just 7. Um, in number 3, let's rewrite 27 as a power of 3. So here I get 3 to the 3rd raised to the 2 thirds power. Now when I multiply 3 times 2 thirds, these 3's can cancel, leaving me with just 2. So this is the same as 3 squared, which is just 9. I'll let you guys try number 4 and check that one with the key. Okay, now in number 5, this is one where our base can actually be written as uh, a power of two different uh, numbers. If I recognize this as 4 to the 3rd raised to the 5 6, I will get the same answer, but it'll look a little bit different um, at first, is if I recognize this as a power of 2, this is 2 to the 6th power raised to the 5 6. So in either case, these are equivalent to 64, um, and raising it to the same power will give me the same result. Now, here, 4, thirds, or 4 to the 3rd raised to the 5 6, if I multiply 3 times 5 6, Okay, that, that 3 will divide that 6 twice, so it is the same as 5 halves. So I have 4 to the 5 halves power. Now this is also something I would have to use rational exponents for and rewrite that base, since I still have that rational exponent, and write that as 2 squared to the 5 halves. So I'm just rewriting 4 equivalently as 2 squared. And after I multiply exponents here, I end up with 2 to the 5th, which is also just 32. Okay, these will cancel here, leaving me with 2 to the 5th. Now over here, if I had just written this, this as the base of 2 to the 6th power raised to the 5 6, well now when I multiply 6 times 5 6, these obviously just cancel here, leaving me with just a 5, I end up with 2 to the 5th, which is 32. So I have slightly less work if I recognize the smallest base, which was that 2 here. Um, in number 6, I'll let you guys try that one on your own you want, try both of these bases and uh, check the key. Now in number 7, we're introducing you to a negative rational exponent here. So remember, the same rules apply. This 9 is unhappy. This negative is actually going to stay though, so you don't need to move that negative with it. Think of this as a negative 1 multiplied by 9. The negative 1 does not have a negative exponent, so you're going to leave that negative there and move the 9 to the denominator. So we now have negative 1 over 9 to the 3 halves. Now, let's rewrite 9 as 3 squared, so this is equivalent to negative 1 over 3 squared to the 3 halves power. And then if I were to uh, multiply my exponents here, these would cancel, leaving me with 3 to the 3rd in the denominator, so I have negative 1 over 3 to the 3rd, which is negative 1 over 27. I'll let you try number 8 on your own. Um, make sure that you can recognize this as the power of 5 to some power. All right, now numbers 9 and 10 are actually really quite similar um, to one another. But there are subtle differences, and we're going to get a different value for each of these. So you want to make sure that you understand um, the difference between when we have a negative here, um, the opposite 
of this value, as opposed to here where we're taking negative 125 and raising that to that rational exponent. So here, that, that negative on the outside is not being raised to the 2 thirds. So I'm going to treat that like it's separate from here and rewrite that as the opposite of 125 raised to the 2 thirds. So now I look at 125 and I want to rewrite this as a power of 5, which is similar to what you should have recognized in number 8. Um, so we're going to write that as 5 to the third power. Let's keep that opposite sign out in front. And then this is raised to the 2 thirds. So now I have, if I multiply my exponents here, the opposite of 5 to the second power. Because if I multiply here, 3 times 2 thirds leaves me with just 2. So I end up with negative 25. Now in number Okay, now in number 10, we see that we have this negative 125. This is the base instead of over here where we have the opposite of this value here. So here, this negative is inside the parentheses raised to a rational exponent, so there is a difference between the two. Now, when we rewrite this base here, negative 125, um, it is still 5 cubed, but it's actually a negative 5 cubed. So we have negative 5 cubed raised to the 2 thirds power. Okay. So um, this is the reason why it's negative 5 cubed is because obviously if I cube negative 5, two negatives make that positive, but multiplying by another negative ends up giving me negative 125. Okay? Alright, so anyhow, if I were to multiply these exponents, now I have negative 5 raised to the second power. Negative 5 squared gives me positive 25. So these can be a bit tricky. Um, obviously the negatives sometimes have, you know, give students issues, but I'm going to let you practice here on numbers 11 and 12. These are very, very similar um, to what you just saw in 9 and 10, so check with the key and try those on your own. Alright, now the next objective for today is to be able to write radical expressions using rational exponents instead. So to basically understand this a little bit better, I've got rules off to the side here that we're going to break down so that you can understand how you can rewrite a radical using exponents and then turn it into some basic problems that we've been working on for the past few days. So let's take the first rule here. The square root of x is equal to x to the 1 half power. So notice the notation here. I'm dropping the radical and rewriting this now using a rational exponent. So take for example the square root of 2. I could rewrite that as 2 raised to the 1 half power. The square root of 3 is equivalent to 3 raised to the 1 half power and the square root of 4 is equivalent to 4 raised to the 1 half power. Now these first two that I worked on, these are examples of you know things that would be very difficult to evaluate without a calculator. I don't expect you to be able to do that. But 4 to the 1 half power though is something that we just talked about. We can rewrite 4 as a base using 2. So 2 squared raised to the 1 half power is equivalent to 4 to the 1 half. Now 2 squared raised to the 1 half power is the same as 2 to the first, which is why you can clearly see, these are equivalent, right? Why you can clearly see that you can always raise anything to, an ex, uh, to a rational exponent and drop that radical, okay? So the next uh, rule here, the cube root, so notice that now instead of having uh, nothing there, so kind of imagine that as like an invisible 2 there, now we have a 3. This is the cube root of x. Now the cube root of x would be written as x raised to the one third power. And so the fourth root of x would be x raised to the one fourth power. The fifth root of x would be x raised to the one fifth power and so on. So that's why we have here this general rule. When you take the yth root of x, you can always rewrite that using rational exponents as x raised to the one over y. So this is basically something that comes in handy so that we don't have to deal with radical expressions. We can simply use exponents instead. Um, I want to take a look more at uh, the bottom part here too. So if we take a look at um, the square root of x squared equaling x, let's break down why that actually occurs this way. If I write the square root of x squared as x squared raised to the one half power, and I distribute that one half, now I get x to the first, which is just x. So this, using that rule, also applies here. Um, if I take the cube root, I'm sorry, the square root of x cubed, this is the same as taking x cubed raised to the one half power, and x cubed raised to the one half power is the same as x to the three halves power once I multiply those exponents. Um, this next one, 
the square root of x to the fifth is the same as x to the fifth raised to the one half, which is x to the five halves. And then finally here, the cube root of x cubed is equal to x cubed raised to the one third power, which is equal to x to the first power, or just x. So you can always rewrite any exponential, I'm sorry, any radical expression using rational exponents. Okay, that's the general idea here. We're going to use this idea to now simplify these problems to the left. So looking at problem 13, I can rewrite this. Now this is a little bit more complex than just an x on the inside. But I can rewrite this as 216x to the 4th, y to the 5th, raised to the 1 half power, because there's like that invisible 2 here, so it's raised to the 1 half power. Now, this is just a problem that we've been working on for the past few days, so this shouldn't be tough at all. Um, the only new part is that we're going to rewrite that base here as 6 cubed. So we have 6 cubed x to the 4th, y to the 5th, raised to the 1 half power. If I distribute that exponent now, I have 6 to the 3 halves, x squared, and y to the 5 halves. Now this is not something that you should be able to evaluate without the use of a calculator, so this would actually be your final answer here, because you can't break down that base any further. In number 14, this time I want to write that as 27x to the 9th, y to the 15th, raised to the 1 3rd power. So be careful here, because now that exponent should be different, um, because I have the cube root this time. So now if I simplify this base, this is 3 to the 3rd, x to the 9th, y to the 15th, all raised to the 1 3rd. Distributing that exponent here, I get 3 to the 1st, x to the 3rd, and y to the 5th to give me a final answer of 3x cubed, y to the 5th. In number 15, I actually want, actually I want you to try this one on your own, so do that one and check with the key, because that one's pretty similar to the other ones that we were working on. Um, but number 16 here, is slightly different only because I have that negative here. Um, so with this negative, just keep it on the outside of the problem for now and rewrite 32. Let's skip that first step of rewriting the whole thing and, and rewrite this base as 2 to the 5th. So I have 2 to the 5th, x to the 8th, y to the 4th, z to the 6th, raised to the 1 4th power. So now I have the opposite of 2 to the 5 4ths, x squared, y to the 1st, and six, uh, z to the 3 halves, not 6, sorry. So z raised to the 3 halves, 6 times 1 fourth gives me 3 halves. And then my final answer here would look like this. And again, I can't really evaluate that without the use of a calculator, so I can leave this as my final answer. I cannot write this base here any smaller or try to evaluate this. This is not an integer, so that's the best I can do. On number 17, just be careful about this one. I'm going to have you guys do 17 and 18 on your own but just pay special attention there to uh, those uh, roots. All right, I'm going to finish off 19 and 20 with you guys and have you work on 21 also. On number 19, this time when you uh, write this at using exponents here, that negative 32 is on the inside of your parentheses. So everything is being raised to the 1 -fifth power. So this time when we rewrite this base as a power of 2, I'm going to write that as negative 2 raised to the 5th power, then a to the 7th, b to the 11th, all raised to the 1 fifth. Now when I distribute that exponent here, I get negative 2 to the 1st power, that whole thing is negative 2 to the 1st power, 5 times 1 fifth is 1, then a to the 7 fifths, b to the 11 fifths, to give me negative 2, a to the 7 fifths, b to the 11 fifths. So um, this problem here is slightly different than what we just worked on here. Um, even though they both have that negative overall, uh, just be aware that this time the, the uh, exponent, or I'm sorry, the uh, negative was not inside the radical, so you treat it a little bit differently than if it was inside the radical. All right. Then finally, number 20 is slightly different only because it's a quotient on the inside, but uh, don't be afraid of something that looks like this because you can turn this into something with exponents by rewriting this as 64a to the 7th over 216b to the 6th raised to the one third. So it's a three here, cube root, so I'm going to raise that to the one third power. And then I'm just going to simplify the inside. So 64 is four cubed. You could also do two to the sixth here. It doesn't make a difference, but I'm going to use four to the third. And the reason why I'm using four to the third is because this is going to distribute to the one third here. So I like to cancel out the threes nice and easily. But it doesn't matter which one you would have chosen. 
Um, the 216 in the denominator, I'm going to rewrite that as 6 cubed, and then b to the 6th here. All of this will be raised to the 1 3rd power, so I haven't quite distributed that exponent yet. Now I will distribute, just make sure that you distribute it to everywhere. So you have 4 to the 1st, a to the 7 thirds, 6 to the 1st, and b to the 2nd power. And that would be, oops, that's not my final answer, because I need to make sure I simplify that 4 over 6 here, right? This is going to simplify now to 2 thirds. So 2 times a to the 7 thirds over six, uh, 3 times b squared would be my final answer. Okay, um, please try number 21 on your own. And then check with the key. Uh, we are going to stop here because tomorrow's video, part 2, is going to cover solving exponential equations. Um, in order to do this, you have to have a really solid understanding, though, of this first part of the lesson. So make sure that if anything is confusing, you go back um, and replay it. And then make sure you're also getting a lot of good practice tomorrow in class. All right, nice job. I will see you tomorrow.